George Papandreou ultimately was a bit of a dilettante. He was a bit weak. He was a socialist who had a beautiful house in Patmos and enjoyed the good life, sort of like Varoufakis enjoys the good life. George Papandreou, when he called the referendum at the end of 2011, got beaten up by everybody at the G20 in Cannes. Barroso and Zapatero, the former Prime Minister of Spain, who were eyewitnesses of what happened to Papandreou in Cannes at the G20, told me of how violent the language became. At one point, um, you know, there was even a fight between Sarkozy and Papandreou about the chair he was sitting on. He said, you want my chair as well? So it was really, really uh, hostile, very brutal. Barroso, the former European Commission president, told me how he came up with the idea of Papademos, how he whispered it around to Greek officials. And actually, Barroso and others in Brussels are quite proud of the fact that they came up with the idea of a good technocrat to take over from Papandreou. And when Papandreou got back on the plane to return to Athens from Cannes, it was clear to everyone, probably also to him, that he was finished. And when he was betrayed by his finance minister, who stepped off the plane at 4.45 in the morning and said there should be no referendum, that was the end for Papandreou, and that was the influence of the European Commission and Germany and France in pushing out Papandreou.